Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. The Minister is aware that Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare is considering the futures of the Huntsville District Memorial Hospital and South Muskoka Memorial Hospital. Just last week, MAHC's task force released descriptions of the three models they are considering, saying they will be making a recommendation this spring. The three options they are considering are two acute sites maintaining the existing hospitals and services, one inpatient and one outpatient site, and a one-site model. Speaker, the people of Muskoka and Almaguin have been very clear. They want their two hospitals maintained. Will the minister encourage MAHC and the task force to listen to the people who rely upon these hospitals and recommend maintaining two hospitals? Thank you. Minister for Health, Long-Term Care. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, the member opposite is uh, obviously a well-known advocate for his community, and uh, we've heard from the Muskoka Algonquin CEO on a number of issues uh, in relation to plans for the future. I uh, really do want to commend the way the Ontario Hospital Association has stepped up to the plate uh, in assisting us at looking how we move forward with looking at efficiencies, centers of excellence, and yet providing care as close to home as possible. All these pieces are very much in the mix. And it's uh, really quite remarkable how our advisory council, uh, chaired by the Ontario Hospital Association president, has looked at the whole spectrum of hospitals in this province, from academic health science centers, psychiatric hospitals, rehab Answer. hospitals, all the services that are provided through small hospitals, large hospitals, hospitals, etc. And I'll have more to say in the supplement. Thank you. Supplement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, again to the Minister of Health. One of the challenges facing Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare and other small and medium-sized hospitals is that their funding has not kept up with their costs. Exactly. Many of these costs are not things the hospitals can control. And in fact, some like hydro costs and collective bargaining agreements are things the province controls. Yes. So the province has increased hospital costs without increasing funding to cover these costs. As a result, some hospitals have run deficits for many years. In the lead-up to the June election, the government has been touting the 4.6% increase they are supposedly giving to Ontario's hospitals. But MHAC received only 1.4%, and West Perry Sound Health Centre has been told they will receive approximately 1%. Speaker, will the minister explain why these hospitals, in my riding, are not receiving the full 4.6 per cent increase Question. in funding. Well, Mr. Speaker, we made it very clear that our increase, the $822 million this year, would provide an average of 4.6 per cent overall increase to hospitals in this province. Yeah. Clearly in some uh, communities, no, high growth communities such as ones that I represent, uh, the need, the, in, uh, the increase in population, the increase in acuity is greater than in some other areas of the province. This is precisely why we consult with the Ontario Hospital Association as well as the local, local health integration network as to the distribution of these funds. It's based on evidence, it's based on need. In particular, in this situation, I I know that my predecessor, the former Minister of Health, met with the City Council uh, and asked them to come back with a unified plan for the hospitals in uh, the members' riding. And so we look forward to that. We're awaiting that kind of uh, community decision Answer. to inform us, and we'll move forward in that regard. Thank you. Question. The member from Welland.